This week, 200 new DC fast chargers have been added to the database, and anytime I see a round number like that, I'm always suspect of uh, something wrong. But I double-checked it, it just so happens that we're an even 200, so I suppose we could expect that once every 100 times I do this or something, I don't know. This week, Tesla added 10, ChargePoint added 26, EVgo added 3, and I wanted to call out that EVgo's station count remains unchanged, which must mean they've closed 3 as well. However, their stall count went up. So the three they closed were likely, you know, one stall stations that were just old and aging out. Let's go ahead and get into the data. This week I decided to just show the locations where additions have been made. And last night I checked Tesla and there were no additions whatsoever. So they must periodically update this. If you look at the dates here, it was throughout the week, but they just added it last night. So it seems like ChargePoint and EVgo update the database as they activate stations in almost real time. And almost all the other CPOs look to be adding data into the database on some kind of periodic infrequent cycle. Uh, for instance, I th I'm pretty sure looking at what's going on that Circle K, even though I know they're opening stations and there's no entries here, it looks like they do it about once a month. Next one is ChargePoint. A few things I want to call out here. Last week, a station in Decatur, Alabama was opened, which looks like this. ChargePoint has been working on a war of attrition. They've been putting in stations like this just relentlessly. And as I mentioned, the count this week is an additional 26 stations. And this is an important station. This is in the deep south where DC fast chargers are in dire need. And what ChargePoint is doing here is they're not paying for these stations. The customers are paying for the station. ChargePoint builds them, uh, helps with the engineering to get them installed. And then they operate the backend systems. So ChargePoint's network is expanding and other people are paying for it. It's a pretty nifty business model. Of course, the ChargePoint operator in this case is the Tennessee Valley Authority. You can see right here on the sticker. Uh, so actually the ChargePoint operator is not ChargePoint, but if you combine all those into uh, just a charge point network. It's a little bit easier to track than trying to do all the fragmented uh, CPOs that actually make up the charge point network. Another one I want to call out is right here. This one definitely caught my eye. QT is a very large convenience store brand, and they haven't been doing anything at all with DC fast chargers. This station I looked up. It is in PlugShare, but there are no pictures. And then I did an expanded search. Um, let me pull this up real quick. I did an expanded search for other things with QT, just to see if QT was actually starting to install DC fast chargers more broadly. And I came across this other station right here, which is similarly in Denver, Colorado. I look to see where QT's headquarters is because lots of times if a convenience store is going to be doing a build of DC fast chargers, they'll do it close to their headquarters. And they're headquartered in Tulsa, Oklahoma, so I'm not quite sure why Denver is being selected. And this station, if you look at the open date, was back in 2022. So this station, which looks like this, has been open since 2022. And they just opened a second station in Denver, actually not too far from the first station, um, with similar chargers using ChargePoint hardware. So I don't know if this is a signal that ChargePoint, I'm sorry, that uh, QT is getting ready to do a nationwide build or not, or if they're just in the testing phases or really what this means. But I've got it on my list to keep an eye on it, and I'll see it as it pops into the ChargePoint additions each week if they're starting to do a rollout and if so i'll start tracking them because they're they're a major uh, national convenience store brand the next one is ebigo let me get my sql 
pulled up here. Stand by. They have opened three stations. This one in North Bergen got some uh, press on social media, and uh, they were advertising it, and it seems to be a pretty nice station. The next one I want to call out is FPL, which is what was an honorable mention two weeks ago, and they continue to add stations. Um, two new stations from FPL, Delray Beach and Hollandale Beach. And I looked at the Panera Bread one. This one's kind of interesting. It looks like this. Characteristic St. Augustine gas, grass from uh, Florida. I used to live in Florida. I kind of miss the place. But these pictures are from uh, dis from December or January. So this is this station has been open a while, is my point. And they're just now adding it to the database. And if you look at the install date, it says 327. But this Panera Bread location is very clearly open since January. So their processes for adding entries into the database is a little bit inaccurate, but at least we have some way of tracking as they get around to it. Uh, and maybe they go through a phase where they leave it open and free for three months, and then they start billing, and, and the commencement of billing is actually when they add it to the database. I don't know. But um, regardless, FPL, Evolution, is a pretty large player so far in the state of Florida, and they seem to still be... Uh, growing at a pretty good pace. Thanks for watching.